Okay, so welcome back. I think I heard that is some issues with the network. I hope everyone can now hear me from that end. Yes. Okay, yes. So, uh, we can actually move on. And as I was saying, uh, before we do anything, I'll actually explain uh, that is some various objectives of the topic, specific objective. And in this case, you must know that is when it comes to the testing of exams, uh, we normally check at the key objectives of and that is where uh, the content of the exams uh, normally uh, comes from. And uh, we have that is uh, the following objectives. Uh, that is by the end of the topic, each one of you uh, should be able of course, to define what the race uh, is. Also, to describe that is how uh, the cathode rays are actually produced, or simply that is the production of cathode rays. Also, uh, by the, the topic, you should be able to state uh, that is some various properties of cathode rays. And that is explaining the function of the cathode oscilloscope. And that is the television tube. Because that is those, this one are actually, that is one of the topic outlines. That is the television tube, of which is actually uh, not new to you. They also to solve that is some various uh, mathematical problem or that is numerical problems involving uh, that is the cathode ray oscilloscope. That is the cathode ray oscilloscope. So uh, we move directly uh, toward uh, that is cathode rays uh, are actually produced or actually what uh, cathode rays are. And simply the cathode rays are uh, the stream of electrons ejected that is from a metal surface when it is heated uh, sufficiently. I uh, remember uh, back in uh, that is chemistry. I think uh, we actually learned about that is some um, uh, forces of attraction between that is the positive nuclei of an atom or that is of a metal atom and uh, that is the outermost electrons. And in that case, why are we hitting? Why are we hitting that is the metal? Um, surface, we are simply hitting in order that is to break or that is to weaken uh, the forces of attraction between the positive nuclei uh, that tends to attract that is the 
electrons in the energy level of the metal uh, surface. And at that point, um, also you remember metals conducts uh, heat by the use of uh, that is by the use of free electrons and. Uh, heating a metal uh, basically increases that is the energy of the electrons. And at this point, electrons are actually, that is the electrons gain kinetic energy and break uh, free from the attractive forces of the nucleus. And hence, uh, this process uh, of uh, ejecting or actually that is emitting electrons from the metal surface due to this energy is simply known as that is the thermionic emission. So uh, in this case, emitting the electrons, removing the electrons from the metal surface or ejecting the electrons from the metal surface by the use of heat energy is simply uh, known as that is the thermionic emission. And we shall actually see that and uh, see that is how this is actually done. And you can see that is when a tungsten filament is heated to a very high temperature, that is 2500 Kelvin, electron will be emitted from the, that is from its surface. And I think uh, we've just talked about that, that if electron gains sufficient energy to escape from the attractive forces of the metal atoms and nuclei. I think this one is actually a basic knowledge from chemistry. That is the nuclear, or rather, is the nuclear force of attraction. They are attracting between the positive nuclei, that is the protons, and the outermost uh, electrons uh, energy level. I think with that one, we'll actually not dwell in that so much. But what you uh, that is what you need to understand is that that is in this case, we're trying to weaken the forces of attraction by heating in that you can actually release some electron from the metal surface. And this entire process is simply uh, known as, that is the thermionic uh, emission. That is the thermionic em emission. So I think up to that point, um, uh, um, I'm actually clear. Is everybody getting? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, we move on how uh, that is, uh, that is we move on. That is when an anode is placed in front of the hot cathode filament, electrons will be attracted towards it. This one is actually, in this case, this one we are hitting at this point. And remember that is from the basic laws of electricity. Electrons are negatively charged. Definitely when you place that is an anode in front of the cathode, at that point, the electrons will be attracted by the positive uh, electrode. So uh, we move on to the next slide. And at that point, that one is simply, that is the definition of cathode rays of which we've just discussed, that is the stream of fast moving electrons from a hot filament, that is the cathode. The hot filament in this case is the cathode, which we are hitting in order to remove, or rather is to emit electrons. And all these, they are actually placed that is in an evacuated a tube. And then that is the purpose of evacuating that is a tube. It's, uh, that is kind of a vacuum in that case. We are simply uh, using a vacuum tube in this case because uh, uh, in this case, we are trying actually to prevent the electrons from colliding with molecules which can actually reduce their kinetic energy. And at that point, the acceleration will actually reduce if air was actually present in this case. Because remember, we have that is some collision of particles and electron, collision of air particles and electron. And at that point, when electrons collide with the air particles at this point, the kinetic energy uh, of the electrons will actually uh, decrease. And hence, you may find that that is the electrons will not actually run, that is to the anode. And uh, you can see we have that is a six volt uh, filament supply. That one's actually, that is for heating. Then you have that is the cathode filament. This way now that is we are actually trying to eject, that is some electron and uh, so on. So we are, we are saying that is the thermionic emission is the production of electrons from a hot cathode filament in an evacuated tube containing a cathode and anode. And now uh, a question can actually be set uh, in this part when it comes that is to an exam uh, context. Why are we using an evacuated tube? I've just mentioned. Why are we using an evacuated tube at this point? You can also be asked, define the term thermionic emission. Also you can be asked, 
describe the production of cathode rays. So at this point, we are using uh, that is the uh, in this case that is the uh, that is a vacuum tube it is used in order to prevent the electrons from colliding with air molecules. Electric energy. And please, uh, you can actually. Can you please uh and be because you are disrupting us a bit? So in that case, you can see that is how question can actually be said. Why are we using that is an evacuated tube? Whatever that is a vacuum tube. Simply, it is actually to prevent the electrons from colliding with air, which reduces the kinetic energy of uh that is the electrons. That is the kinetic energy of the electrons. So uh uh, we've actually defined that is the thermionic emission, that is the production of electrons from a hot cathode filament in an evacuated tube containing that is cathode and an anode. So you can see that is that tube, the part of the tube, we have that is the vacuum, the cathode filament at that point, we have that is the anode just in front of the cathode. At that point, anode is positively charged, is, is actually that is a, a positive electrode and cathode team that the negative electrode. And you can see we are actually trying to emit electron from the cathode running towards the anode. And you'll actually see the whole, or that is the entire uh, process. I think um, actually with everyone at that point. Yes. Yes. Uh, very good. So uh, we move on. That is how is actually uh or that is how that is cathode rays produced. The cathode filament is heated and it emits a about this one. So the high voltage between the cathode and the anode causes the electron to travel across the gap. From the cathode to the anode, the tube is evacuated so that the, the electrons are free without colliding with the molecules. When the rays hit the screen, in that case, it flows and luckily various properties of the cathode rays. Uh, one, the properties of the cathode rays is actually they glow or actually they fluoresce in that case. So you can see this case is actually connected to very a high voltage at this point that is between the cathode and the anode in order to ensure uh, that is to ensure that the electrons travel that is across the gap that is from the cathode to the uh, anode. And you have that is some various properties of the cathode rays. And uh, in that case, uh, with the properties, also, this one is actually that is another very important part that you need to note that the properties of the cathode rays can be tested when it comes to an exam. And uh, one of the properties of the cathode rays is that the cathode rays uh, travel that is in a straight line. That simply means what they form sharp uh, shadows. And uh, that is that, that they form sharp, uh, that is. Uh, they, they form that is sharp shadows of Maltese cross. Let us see how uh, this shadow is actually formed. So you can see this one, this one is actually that is this uh, cross. At this point, simply we're saying that is the cathode rays travel that is in a straight line. So you can see that is the shadow at this point is actually formed. That is the uh, the, the shadow of the Maltese uh, cross. Uh, that is the shadow of the Maltese uh, Maltese cross. And let me ask you one question: How do we form shadows? How are shadows formed? Hello. When an obstacle is in front of the source of light. That is when an obstacle, what obstacle? Simply, you must be very specific. What obstacle? Okay. An open okay. obstacle. Are we together? Hello? Pardon? Yes. Can you be? When an opaque uh, object is actually in front of the rays of light. That is when that is we have is a shadow. I can see that is we have someone who is saying that is please go back to the previous slide. And I want to see uh, which light. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> so 
So we are at that slide. Is it this slide, Timothy? Yes, it's that slide. So is there any question? Why do we use an evacuated tube? Uh, we simply uh, say that is we are using that is an evacuated tube. Simply an evacuated tube is simply a vacuum. We have no air uh, that is in that tube because in this case, we are trying to prevent that is the electrons from colliding with air particles or rather that is the air molecules which can actually reduce the kinetic energy of the electron. So these are some of the questions that can actually be tested in an exam. Are we in agreement? Yes, thank you. Yeah, okay. Uh, then I can see that is uh, someone is asking a question. Malimo, please also, as you finish, please help us to acquire the notes kindly. Uh, you'll get that is the notes. I'll send you the notes. Are we together? Yes. Okay, yes. so we move on. So uh, we have that is the second property. Uh, that is the cathode rays carry a charge. And they are actually uh, charged. And in that case, many uh, that is experiments actually reveal that they carry that is a negative charge because we are talking about what electrons. That is going back. That is to the basic uh, knowledge of chemistry in form two. I think yeah, we actually discuss about that is some various uh, of uh, subatomic particles, or rather that is the characteristic of subatomic particles of an atom, and we said. The subatomic particles of uh, the, the subatomic particles, that is the properties of that is the subatomic particles. We have that is three subatomic particles of an atom. We have that is the protons, neutrons, and electrons. And one of the basic property of electron is that electrons are negatively charged. And at that point, since we are saying that is cathode rays are a stream of fast moving electrons. So in that case, so many experiments have actually proved that the cathode rays are actually uh, negatively charged. And therefore, simply means they can actually be deflected by both that is electric and magnetic fields. And in that case, they are actually deflected uh, towards the positive charge, showing that they are negatively charged. And at that point, because we can see, being deflected towards the positive charge. In this, in this case, I think that is the cathode rays being negative. Uh, definitely a like charge, and uh, that is unlike charge attract, that is unlike charges uh, uh, repel. So at that point, definitely uh, they can actually be deflected towards the positive charge because they are negatively charged. So definitely, we yeah, have that is a positive terminal or that is a positive electrode, they will be deflected towards that direction. Then you have that is the cause that is uh fluorescence, or actually they move in some substances. And uh they glow in some substances, and I think we have actually just discussed about that one, how uh that is the cathode rays uh actually glows and on. So uh, we move on, that is to another property. They produce that is X-rays when they strike uh, that is a solid matter. Uh, also, they are deflected by both electric and magnetic field and so on. So what do we mean when we say that is the cathode ray that is glows in substance? Uh, remember uh, the cathode rays that is uh, uh, possesses that is the kinetic energy. And at some point, when they hit that is the screen, the kinetic energy is actually converted to both uh, that is heat energy and light energy. And at that point, we have that is some materials that are actually, uh, uh, that is some material that actually glows at that point. So in this case, uh, when it hit that is at that point, it glows and so on. So uh, we have that is it produces that is X-rays when they strike uh, that is a solid matter. We'll actually learn about that is uh, how X-rays are produced. And when you have that is a, that is a concept on cathode ray and cathode ray tube, definitely when it comes that is to X-ray, it's just the same concept. So it will be actually a repetition. Uh, and I think uh, that is another teacher will actually handle you that is on X-rays. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is the other topic. Then we have that they possess kinetic energy and can turn or rotate. That is a paddle wheels in a discharge tube. 
So those are actually that is some of the basic properties. And you can see in this case, we are trying actually to, to illustrate them using some diagram. You think that they travel in a straight line, hence they form that is sharp shadows of the Maltese cross. Placing that is a Maltese cross at this point, you can see that is a sharp shadow at this case. So the metal cross lies in the path of the beam of electron and cast a sharp uh, shadow. And this one actually demonstrates that is the cathode rays travels in a straight line. Then you have that is the next, uh, the same concept. Then uh, this one, you can see that is the uh, demonstrate that is how the electrons are actually negatively charged. Uh, in this case, you can see in this case, a positive, uh, uh, we have that is an electric field. Then you can see that the cathode rays are actually deflected towards the positive at this point. Then uh, we have that is the next, uh, the next one. Then they cause uh, fluorescent or that they glow in some substances. You can see that it's at this point because they simply possess that is the kinetic energy. And this, the kinetic energy is actually con converted into heat and light at some point. Then uh, they cause fluorescence or glow in some substances. So you can see at that point. So uh, you can see this one is simply, that is the cathode rays, the properties. Then you can see how the electrons are actually deflected by magnetic fields. This one is the cathode ray. You can see the rays being deflected towards this direction. This one is the North Pole, the North Pole. Then because simply in this case, the electrons are actually, that is negative charge, they actually deflected towards the North Pole. So you can see they are actually deflected towards the North Pole. Hello, are we? Yes. So I think you can see that is just but very basic. Then we move on to another diagram. So this one simply that is the deflection tube. You can see. At this point, uh, we are actually producing that is, uh, we are we are actually that is producing that is the cathode rays from this point here. We are, that is you're seeing that is the deflection tube. And then that, is, that is a stream of electrons. You can see where they actually uh, deflected. They are actually that is deflected towards uh, that is the north pole because that is the magnetic field lines are actually moving from the north pole to the south pole. Then uh, we have that is the uh, they produce that is the X in the strike that is a solid uh, metal target, and what is simply uh, that is so uh, they produce uh, that is produce X rays when they strike that is a solid metal target, and you can see that is normally. Uh, the X-rays are simply uh, some electromagnetic, that is radiation, that are actually produced by fast moving electrons uh, on impact, that is by metal target. And at this point, simply, we have that is the cathode. The electron heating at this point, at the metal target, they simply produce that is an X-ray. And uh, so on. So uh, we have another part. That is where that is the cathode rays oscillograph. And I think I will actually discuss about this one. Let us leave it, that is at that point. Then uh, we discuss about that is the cathode rays uh, oscilloscope. This one is actually, that is another part which is very important. And at this point, we are going to discuss about that is the parts of a cathode rays. Uh, uh, that is the part of the cathode rays oscilloscope. Uh, so uh, this one is the front face of the CRO. And when we get back, that is to school, uh, the cover uh, will actually show you that is the CRO. And I think kama nyumbani mkile TV ya kitambo, unaezaendo fungue nani alafu wangale, that is that tube. 
That one is simply that is the CRO. That is one of the application of a modified application. Uh, that's a modified CRO part of TV. I can see someone is asking, uh, can they also be deflected to the south? Let me pose the uh, that is the question back to you. What have you said? What have you said that is about the cathode rays? Can they be deflected towards the south pole? Mm. Yes. No. Why? Say the magnetic lines of force they move from north to south. Very good. I think I've answered. You've answered him. So uh, we move on. That is to some parts. Uh, that is the CRO. And in this case, that is a CRO uh, normally provides a two-dimensional uh, visual display. That is of the signal, wave shape on a screen. And in, in that case, uh, the person observing can actually see uh, that is the signal in various parts of the circuit. And we'll actually look at some various uh, parts of the CRO, that is the cathode ray oscilloscope. And normally the cathode ray oscilloscope normally comprises of some various major parts. We have uh, the electron gun, the main parts of the CRO, we have the electron gun. And also, uh, we have that is the deflection system. We have that is the deflection system. Then we also have that is the fluorescence screen. And also, that is the evacuate a strong glass envelope. So, this one uh, is actually this one, that is some of the parts of the CRO. Which are actually that is very important, and you actually need to understand that is some various uh, properties or that is some various functions of these uh, parts. Some various uh, that is functions of this part, which is actually they are actually very important because most uh, that is or actually that is in most cases uh, in an exam they can be uh, that is these parts can actually be tested. You can be given maybe for example that is a cathode ray tube then uh, you can be asked maybe to label the parts, also state the function of this part and so on. So we'll actually discuss about all this. That is the functions of the electron gun, what it consists of, that is the deflection system and so uh, on. So someone is asking, what is the uh, what is the work of the CRO? That is the cathode ray oscilloscope. We'll actually learn. About, we'll actually discuss about that one. At the end, we'll actually discuss about that. Some various application of the CRO. Just be uh, patient a bit. So uh, this one is uh, is actually that is the cathode ray oscilloscope. You can see uh, the electron gun. Then you can see that the parts of the deflection system, we have that is the Y plates, and uh, that is the X plate. Then this one is the fluorescent uh, screen here at the front. I hope everyone is actually seeing. Yes. yes. Then you can see in this case, we have that is the grid that we need to discuss. So you study the diagram. Then uh, you can see the cathode. Then you have that is the anode. Then you have the Y plates. We have that is the function of the Y plates. Uh, we also have that is the X plates. Then at this point, you can see that is the electron beam, uh, that the electron beam moving towards the screen. And at this point, you can see this one is a vacuum. And we simply stated that is this uh, that is this that is the tube is actually evacuated in order uh, to prevent the electrons from colliding with air molecules, which can actually reduce their kinetic energy. So uh, we move on. That is some various uh, functions of these parts. Also, so this one that is the color. Uh, 
uh, parts of the uh, CRO. So you can see. So you can see that is some of the questions that can actually be tested. Just look uh, state and give the functions of the part shown. We'll discuss about them right now. So that, that is when you are reading, you'll actually know what are you supposed to understand. Or that is what are you supposed to know when it comes, uh, that is to an exam. State and give the function of the following parts. We have that is this part, we have the other part, we have that is the screen and so on. So uh, uh, we have that is the cathode filament, which actually emits the electron readily and heated by a low voltage supply. And I think we've actually discussed about this one. This is where that is we are applying that is heating. So, uh, We have that is a uh, cathode filament, uh, which emits electrons readily when heated by the low voltage supply. And uh, in that case, so you can be asked, what is the purpose of the cathode filament? The, the cathode filament is actually to emit, uh, that is the electrons in many direction when the filament is heated directly, or that is directly by actually, that is the ionic emission. So uh, you can be asked in an exam what uh, that is what is the process of actually, of actually that is emitting uh, that is the electrons in the cathode filament. This one is simply uh, that is the muonic emission. Then uh, we have that is the second uh, part, and this one uh, that is the uh, the cathode filament, the grid, and uh, we have that is the uh, that is the uh, that is the cathode. Uh, the grid and the anode, this one are actually part of the electron gun because you're saying that is, the CRO consists of three major parts. We have the electron gun, the fluoris uh, the, the fluorescent screen, and the deflection system. So we can just go back, uh, that is to that uh, diagram. So you can see this one are the three major parts. You have that is the electron gun, uh, the deflection system, and the fluorescence, uh, that is the fluorescent screen. So, so this one, uh, that is the big part. Now the electron gun consists of what? You can see it consists of what? The cathode, the grid, and the anode. So what is the purpose of the cathode? What are the purpose of the grid? And what are the purpose, or that is what is the purpose of the anode and so on? So we move on that is uh, to what is actually important. So this one are actually now that is some parts of the electron gun. Uh, which uh, we actually trying to discuss about that is their functions and how they actually work when the CRO is actually concerned. <clears throat> so we are saying that is the cathode drive, uh, that, that is the cathode filament emit the electron readily when heated by the low uh, voltage supply. At that point, we are emitting that is electron by the use or actually that is through uh, that is by the muonic emission. Then we have that is the second part, uh, which is the grid. Uh, uh, that is at negative potential, and it controls the number of electrons reaching the uh, that, that that is reaching uh, the screen. So, simply the purpose of the grid in this case, con it actually controls that is the number of electrons in the screen. Now, how uh, does it work? Or that is how does it control that is the number of electrons reaching uh, the screen? And that is when it is more negative, few electrons pass through, and in that case, the screen. Uh, becomes uh, darker. Then when it is less negative, more electrons pass through and then becomes bright. So in this case, the grid provides the direction for the electron beam and controls the number and speed of the electrons in the beam. So uh, in this case, it simply determines the brightness of the spot on the screen. And you'll actually see uh, that, Tukirudi uh, Shule will actually see that, because in that case, it is actually uh, at, that is a very small uh, uh, negative potential relative to the cathode, and its function is actually that is to control that is the intensity of the beam. In that, when it is more negative, few electrons cross over 
the screen. And in that case, if it is actually less negative, more electrons brought over that is to the screen. And in this case, this one can actually, it has actually, there's a control knob. That is a potential divider, which actually varies the potential difference between the grid and the cathode. So when that is in a, uh, that is now, that is to become, that is less negative. So at that point, the screen becomes much brighter. Then we'll actually see that to Kirudi Shule. Tukoba moja po boys? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, yes. we'll actually show you to Kirudi Shule. That is how this grid actually works. So uh, then we have that is another part. Uh, uh, that, that is a... The number of electrons reaching the screen determines that is the brightness uh, that is of the light emitted by the screen. And in that case, uh, the negative voltage of the grid is used as the brightness or that is the brilliance um, uh, control. So you can be asked in an exam, what is the purpose of the negative voltage in the grid? It is simply used that is to determine that is the brightness or that is the brilliance uh, control. That's why I'm telling you that is we have that is a control that is a brightness knob which controls that is the pot a potential divider in that case uh unapunguza then unaongeza and at that point you'll actually see the brightness of uh that is the spot in the screen so uh we move on that is to another part Uh, so we've discussed about that is the electron gun. Then uh, the three major parts of electron gun, we have that is the cathode filament. Uh, we have that is the grid. And also that is another part, uh, which is actually that is the anode. Uh, we have that is the anode. Uh, the, uh, that is of the electron gun, that, that is the anode. The anode simply is actually, that is the positive voltage on the silicon anode. And in this case, it focuses and actually accelerates, that is the electrons to the uh, screen. So the purpose of the anode in this case is actually that is to accelerate, that is the electrons uh, to the screen. I can see Wakahio. Yes, Wakahio. Hello, Wakahio. I can see you are raising up your hand. Wakahio. I could just slow down a bit. Yes. Repeat the functions of the anode. Then I can see we have that one final diambo. Could you repeat the functions of the anode? Okay, no problem. Then Wakahio, what is your question? Then I can see uh, someone was asking uh Malim, I have a question, are cathode rays or, uh, of the electromagnetic spectrum? They are not on the, uh, that is they're actually not um, the uh, electromagnetic uh, spectrum because uh, the cathode ray are actually made up of electrons. And in this case, uh, they're actually not uh, in the electromagnetic uh, spectrum. Then uh, we have that is the function of the anode. We're saying that is the Part of the anode is simply uh, the anode simply focuses that is the electro uh, that is the, the simply focuses uh, and accelerate that is the electrons to the screen. So that is actually that is simply the purpose of the anode. The accelerator that is the electrons towards the screen. You can see. Uh, let me show you. So this one is the anode. You can see. Its purpose is simply that is to focus and actually that is to accelerate that is the electron toward the screen. So from the cathode, 
the electrons are actually accelerated towards the anode. So you can see that is the anode is simply uh, positively charged and the cathode is actually negatively charged. So uh, when we meet that is the electron, definitely they'll actually move towards the anode where we have that positive charge. So th that is the positive electron at that point, it accelerates or after that is focuses the electrons towards, uh, that is the screen. So uh, we move on, that is, another, uh, uh, that is another part. That is we have that is the cylindrical anode in your yeah, That is, we are, we are saying that it has actually two main functions. It accelerates, that is the emitted electrons to the screen and converges and focuses the electrons on uh, the screen. And you can see that is the shape of the anode how it uh, looks like and so on. So we have that is the deflection system. And in this part on the deflection system, uh, it consists that is uh, mainly of two parts or rather that is two pairs of plates, which deflect that is the electron uh, beam when the potential difference is actually applied across uh, them. We have that is the Y plate and the X plates. So we have that is the Y plate and the X plates. And let us go back. So let us go back to that diagram. So this one is the Y plate. So you can see that is the Y plate and the X plate. That is on the CRO. This one is the deflection system where we have that is the Y plates and the X plates. What is the purpose of the X plates? And uh, what is simply that is the purpose of uh, that is the Y plate? So, uh, we move on. Uh, we are saying that is the deflection system consists of two uh, that is pairs of parallel plates. Uh, in that case, they actually refer that is to us that is the vertical plate, which is the Y plate, and we have that is the horizontal plate, which is the X uh, plate. So the X plate can also be referred to that is uh, to the horizontal plate, and the Y plate can also be referred to as, that is the uh, the vertical uh, deflection uh, plate, and. Uh, one of the plate in each is actually set uh, permanent, permanently and actually connected that is to the ground uh, where we have in that is zero volt. And that is the X on the other hand, or rather that is the other plate is actually connected to that is the input signal or that is to the signal, uh, that is triggering signal of the CRO, uh, which is actually that is the Y plate. Then the electron beam passes through the deflection plates. And at that point, the Y plate, uh, we have that is the Y plate, uh, which actually uh, deflects uh, uh, the Y plate, which actually uh, deflects uh, the electrons up and down. And we have, that is the X plate, which actually uh, move, that is the beam of electron left or right, actually of the screen. At, that is a, a certain uh, steady uh, plate. So the function of the Y plate in that case is actually to deflect, that is the electron beam up and down, we'll actually see that. Then the X plate is actually simply to move the beam left or right of the screen at a certain uh, speed. So uh, uh, we move. So uh, thank you, Mr. Ombiro. So we're taking roll call, a very quick one. Uh, you know how we take roll call students? Look at your screen, confirm your class. Quick roll call. This is a much faster speed than earlier. Mm -hmm. 187 out of 220, not yet. 
193 Gordon says you can't see. <coughs> Can you see it now? Is the roll call. You need to pick your class. If your class is A or K, just pick the class and then submit. Mm -hmm. Quick roll call, boys. This should take you less than five seconds to take a roll call. Peter, you can see one also? No, 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 no. We're finishing up the record now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, done at 2.11, so we have about, uh, about, 20, about 20 boys into the crowd, and we're stopping at that point. Uh, Godwin have noted that, or law, or law have noted that. So, kind of well. thank you so much. Uh, Malim, you may proceed. Okay, thank you. Excuse me, sir. Could you please... Could you... Will you please repeat on why one of the X plates is permanently fixed? Yes. Could you kindly repeat on why one of the X plates is permanently fixed? Okay. move on let me get your question i was requesting if you could repeat mm -hmm. why one of the x splits is fixed permanently fixed okay yeah that is some network issues so uh we can actually just begin that is with the deflection system then I'll actually explain on the reason as to why that is one of the X plate is actually permanently fixed. And uh, so that we can actually uh, move, uh, that is so that we can actually move on uh, with that. So I'm saying that if you have that is the deflection system that uh, that is, I want that is to share a certain photo here. You see how they're actually connected. Let me share the photo. I want to share the photo. Sorry. So this is the photo.
So we, we fancied it for Joe. Let me share it briefly. So uh, that is how actually they actually uh, connected. That is the Y plate. And actually that is the arrangement of the plates uh, of the deflection system. Uh, we have that is the Y plate, you can see. And in that case, we actually, that is an input voltage. Then I think uh, earlier before I actually stated that Y plate is simply connected, that is the R, where we have that is zero voltage. Uh, uh, in that case, then uh, we have that is the time-based voltage. We'll discuss about that is the time-based voltage and so on. So that is how actually they are actually connected. Then uh, we have this one. So you mm -hmm. can see that is the Y plates. Uh, and we're saying that is what is the purpose of the Y plates? Hey, let's... Hello? Deflect the beam vertical. I cannot get you. Yes. Up and down. That is to actually uh, deflect. Uh, that is the electron beam that is up and down. And uh, so on. Then you have that is the X plate. What is the purpose of the X plate? Deflects the beam left. Moves the electron beam left. Deflects the beam left and right. Okay. So, uh, let's go on. So, uh, we are saying uh, that is the deflection system. Uh, let me go back. That, we are saying that is the deflection system uh, that is contains, that is two pairs uh, of plates, which actually deflect the electron beam when the potential difference is applied. Uh, that is across them. Uh, we have that for one. We have the white plates uh, that move the beam vertically, and in that case, they are actually placed horizontally uh, to allow that is the beam to actually move up and down. That is the electron beam to actually move up and down. The, then you have that is the X plate, which actually move uh, that is on the beam horizontally. And in that case, they are actually used uh, with that is uh, with a time base on, and the time base makes the spot of the uh, the spot to move that is from left to right across the screen at a steady speed. Let us see. This one is actually that is the time base circuit. I can see some people are actually making some noise. <laughs> So uh, one of the plate uh, that is in each is actually set permanently connected to the ground. It's actually one of the plates. Either that is the, uh, the Y plate uh, or actually that is uh, the X plate. And in that case, uh, to the ground, is, uh, that is uh, one of the plates is in each set actually uh, uh, are permanently connected to the ground, uh, which uh that is in that case we have that is the zero voltage the x whereas that is the other plate of the each is set connected to that is the input signal uh or that is the trig uh, or triggering a uh, signal of the cro then the electron beam passes through the deflection of plates uh we have that is the positive voltage which is applied to the y input terminal which causes the electron beam to deflect uh vertically upward due to the attraction process well, we have that is the negative uh, voltage in that case, which will actually cause uh, uh, that is that is the, the negative voltage, which is actually applied to the Y input terminal, which causes the electron beam to deflect vertically downward due to the repulsion force. And a positive uh, voltage applied that is to the X uh, input terminal will actually cause 
that the electron beam to actually uh, be deflected that is towards uh, the right. And same case, uh, when you apply that is a negative uh, uh, voltage to that is to the X input terminal, it will actually cause that is the uh, that is the electron beam to deflect horizontally that is towards the left of the screen. So you can see uh, we're actually dealing with uh, what actually that is talking about that is the negative uh, voltage. So in an exam, it can actually be asked what will simply happen when you actually apply that is a positive voltage that is the X input terminal to the Y input terminal and so on. And we say that is when we apply that is a positive voltage terminal, uh, that is the Y input terminal, it actually causes that is the electron beam to deflect that is uh, upward due that is the attraction uh, forces. Then uh, while that is a negative voltage applied that is the Y input terminal, it actually causes that the electron uh, beam that is to, uh, to deflect that is vertically downward due that is the repulsion uh, forces between that is the negative uh, electrons and that is the negative terminal. Then we have that is a positive voltage applied that is to the X input terminal, it will actually cause the electron beam uh, to deflect horizontally towards uh, the right. And uh, so on that, so the beam may actually move manually in that is the X and Y direction by applying that is a DC or an AC uh, that is to the Y plate. We'll actually see this to Kifungua Shule. We'll do that is that, uh, we'll actually show you that is how that is the CRO uh, works. Also, we have that is another one that is, we have that is, uh, how can you, can we actually also that is move uh, this beam. The beam can also that is actually be moved uh, using that is uh, something you know, the time-based system. A time-based system is simply that is a special for actually varying voltage apply that is on the X plate and the, uh, that is the Y plate. So in that case, we can also that is vary that is the electron beam by using the time base uh, the time based system, uh, and you're saying this one is simply that is a special circuit for varying that is the voltage applying that is on uh, that is the X uh, plate by varying uh, in that case uh, it simply uh, moves uh, we can actually that is vary or that is uh, we can actually move uh, that is the electron uh, beam that is one. Uh, that is the screen. Then you have that is the time base per unit uh, setting led. You that is select the rate at which that is the waveform is drawn across the screen. And in this case, uh, this one is simply, or it can also that is referred to at some point, or that is in some other books, you can actually find it referred to as that is the sweep speed or the time uh, base uh, setting. And, they, and I think uh, this one is actually can be well actually understood. Uh, when it, uh, that is to Kifanya, that is practically to Kirudi Shule. And I think I'll actually talk to your teachers now to Ambe, that is, uh, they need actually to show you how that is the deflection system uh, works of the CRO. So uh, you can see in this case, when you vary, uh, when you connect, uh, 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 that is when you apply that is the positive voltage uh, when it's actually applied that is to the uh, X input. Uh, uh, that is the X input terminal. So you can see how it's actually varying. That is from the negative. Uh, then it's going that is unaona in a panda, in a kwa right, then left, right, left, right, left, right. Simply the purpose of the X plate is actually to deflect the electron beam uh, that is left or right of the screen that is at that, uh, a certain uh, steady uh, speed. So we have that in the screen end view of the deflection of the plates. So, uh, Then we have that is another part, which is actually that is the fluorescent screen. Uh, the screen uh, is normally uh, coated that is on the inside with that is the zinc sulfide. Uh, 
or that is zinc sulfide or any other substance that can actually glow. Uh, we have that is another substance which is actually known as that is phospho. Uh, uh, the substance uh, glows that is on impact when a beam uh, with beam of electrons. So in that case, we are quoting that is this screen with uh, something that can actually glow. And one of the substance zinc sulfide, we also have that is phospho and so on. And what is the purpose of the screen and how uh, is it working or, or that is the screen is actually coated inside with zinc sulfide phospho, which give that is uh, that is persistence of vision. And when the molecule uh, of the phospho on the screen absorbs the kinetic energy of the electron, some of this energy is actually con uh, converted, uh, that is to light, into light. And then at that point, it actually uh, glows. So uh, normally the, the, uh, the screen normally has, uh, that is a persistence of, that is one, uh, that's a fraction of one about 20 of a second. And therefore it glows even after the beam of electron has actually uh, passed. So uh, that is for this re uh, reason, uh, the persistence of uh, the visions, uh, a waveform is actually observed that is on the screen. And I think uh, we can actually go back that is to something that can actually be shown that is on the screen. Uh, this one is now that is the waveform. So you can see that is the waveform, which is actually observed on the screen. So uh, the inside of the screen is normally coated with graphite, uh, which actually serve three functions. It has actually, that is three function. One, to conduct that is the, uh, that is to the earth. And we have also, that is another function, which is actually uh, to shield the beam from, that is, the, uh, that, that is from the uh, external uh, electric field and also to accelerate the electrons towards the screen, since it has actually the same potential as the anode. So in that case, this one actually that is function of the graphite uh, in the screen. So you can be asked in an exam state, um, the two reasons as to why that is the screen is coated uh, with graphite. One of the reason is a graphite conducts the electrons, uh, that is some um, excess electron that is the ground. And in that case, uh, what does this mean? Conducting that is the electrons to the ground? Earthing. That is the earthing. Earthing. Very good. Then you have that is to provide that is the shielding uh, from uh, that is the external uh, electric field and actually accelerate that is the electrons towards uh, the, uh, the screen because it has actually that is the same potential as the anode. And remember, we said that is the purpose of the anode is simply to focus or actually that is to converge the electron beam or to accelerate the electrons toward the screen. Also, the graphite serves the same purpose as the anode at some point. Actually, that is to accelerate the electrons towards, um, uh, towards uh, the screen. So uh, up to that point, I have that is some various functions. Uh, that is some various questions to ask you, and actually to do that is some various uh, discussion. And let me start with question number one, and let me choose uh, some human beings to answer. Uh, question number one. State the use of the grid in the CRO. The cathode ray oscilloscope. Yes, Omutere? It actually controls the number of electrons um, reaching the screen. Very good. The first function is to control the number of electrons reaching the screen. The other function? We have Jonathan? To control the brightness of the screen. 
very good to control uh, the brightness of the screen. Okay. Then uh, the other function. What is the other function of the grid? Yeah. Any other person? So the other function of the grid actually uh, that is to provide the direction for the electron uh, beam. To provide that is the direction of the electron beam and also that is to control the number and the speed of electrons in the beam. And also that is the grid also determines that is the brightness of the spots uh, 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 on the screen. That is the brightness uh, of the uh, spot on the screen. Then uh, that is, I have another function. Uh, that, that is another, uh, that is another question. How uh, do we produce uh, the cathode rays? How do we produce cathode rays? Emission. You, okay. you are just mentioning the Munich emission. What is the Munich emission? Can you try to elaborate what the Munich emission is? Okay. Somebody? It is the, it is the production of electrons for vacuum tube containing a cathode and an anode. Uh -huh. So uh, what happens? Mayabi? Hello? By heating the cathode, the cathode with a low voltage supply. That is by heating a cathode by low voltage supply. Then what happens? The electrons gain enough kinetic energy to break away from the cathode. Then, uh, uh, very good. So in that case, uh, we are actually producing that is the cathode rays. That is by the ammonic emission. And that is the high potential difference connected. That is the anode accelerator, the electron toward the fluorescent screen. So uh, then another thing, uh, we, we also have that is another uh, question. Why are we coating that is the cathode filament with oxides of strontium and or, or actually that is thorium? Because normally that is the cathode filament is normally coated with that is the oxides of strontium and thorium. Anybody? Can anybody try that? Yes, Malcolm. Uh, I didn't understand the point in the book, but it says because of the low work function. That is the low, uh, that is the uh, a work function, that is what that is work function is simply the minimum energy uh, required that is to extract an electron uh, that is from a given, uh, that is metal. And I think, yeah, to Kiongelea, that is, have you, have you actually been taught that is the photoelectric effect? No. Uh, no, okay. no. That is what one, uh, that is what uh, work function is. It's actually that amount uh, that is the minimum amount of energy required to extract that is electron from that is a given uh, metal uh, surface. And the purpose of using that is this uh, uh, the reason as well that is we are quoting that is the cathode filament and uh, uh, with, uh, with thorium and, and strontium, with the oxides of thorium and strontium is because they are very, they are actually, that is very low work uh, function or actually they simply are required that is very um, low amount of energy so that that is the electron can actually be ejected from uh, that is the, uh, the filament or that, that is the, the cathode filament. 
Then I have that is another question. What is the purpose of the anode in the CRO? Purpose of the anode in the CRO? Raymond, what are Accelerate the electrons to the screen. Very good. One of the purpose is to accelerate the electrons to the screen. The other one? Focus is electrons on the screen. Very good. Focus the electrons uh, towards, uh, that is, uh, the screen. Then I can see that some people are actually getting. Then you have, there is another question that I need, uh, that is to ask you. Uh, why uh, do we coat, uh, that is the screen with graphite? What is the purpose of screen? That was the purpose of graphite uh, uh, inside uh, the screen? Because you know that is the screen is normally coated uh, that is with the graphite. What is the purpose of graphite? Conduct excess electrons into the earth. That is conduct excess electrons to the earth. The other function? Fuel is the electrical beam. beam. Very good. To shield that is the electron beam. Then what is the other function? Accelerate electrons towards the screen. Very good. To accelerate the electrons towards uh, the screen. Okay. Then uh, uh, let me ask you this, uh, this other question. Very good. I can see that is your answer. Ivan Mayabi. Then we have that is this uh, other question. What happens when you apply that is a positive voltage uh, to the Y input terminal? What happens when you apply uh, a positive voltage to the Y terminal? The electron beam is deflected upwards. That is the electron beam will actually be deflected upwards due to the attraction forces. Then when you connect them, uh, that is when you connect a uh, negative voltage, uh, that is the Y input terminal, definitely that the electron beam will actually deflect it downward, vertically downward due to repulsion uh, forces. And remember, we said that the function of the Y input, uh, that is the Y plate is actually to deflect the electron beam vertically upward and uh, that is downward. At that point, when it is connected, that is to a positive voltage, when a positive voltage is applied to the Y input, the electron beam is actually deflected upward due to the attraction uh, forces. Then when uh, that is a negative voltage is applied to the Y input, is actually deflected downward due to the repulsion uh, forces. Then uh, we have that is another question. Uh, in this case, uh, we have that is another question also. Uh, what is the purpose of the screen? What is the purpose of the screen? <clears throat> what is the purpose of the screen? Hello? What is the purpose of a screen? Lemu, <clears throat> can you say to fluorescence when the electron beams? Uh huh. Uh, uh, that one is actually that's a good trial. Any other person? Jonathan. Jonathan. Yes. 
And he said to reveal the beam deflection. To? Reveal the beam deflection. To reduce? To reveal the beam deflection. Uh-huh. Uh, we can actually simply say that in the screen uh, that is enabled uh, uh, is actually coated mm-hmm. with a substance that actually glows on impact with the beam of electron. So we have that is you can look now that is a that question, or actually that is to give the persistence in vision, uh, and since it's actually coated with uh, graphite and so on. So these one are some of the function of the screen. So you can uh, now look at that question, state and give the functions of the following parts. What is part two? <laughs> what is that do? The cathode. That is the cathode filament. What is the purpose of the cathode filament? Um, when it's hot, it emits electrons. Ah, uh, very good. What is part three? Anode. 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 Then what is the purpose of the anode? Mayabi? Accelerate electron. Very good. Then you have part six. What is part six? Yes? The screen. Fluorescent screen. Fluorescent screen. Fluorescent screen. Then uh, we have that is uh, five. What is part five? That is the electron beam, right? The electrical. That is the electron beam. And uh, so on. So in that case, I have that is this other question. That is the, I have that is some two last question. Then we move on uh, to some other parts. Uh, that is some application of the CRO. Uh, then we'll actually do some mathematical uh, problem uh, when that is the cathode ray. Uh, that is the cathode ray oscilloscope is actually concerned. And uh, let me start by this asking this question. Why is the tube evacuated? Pardon? Why is the tube evacuated? To prevent collisions between air particles and the electrons. That is to prevent the collision between the air particles and the electron, which reduces the kinetic energy of the electrons. To Papamoja, boys. Pardon the question. Yes. I'm saying, that is, I'm actually saying that uh, I'm asking that is why is the tube evacuated, or actually why are we using a vacuum? That is a vacuum tube. Hello. Hello. Collisions between air particles and electrons. to prevent electrons from colliding with the air particles. Very good. That is to prevent that is the air particles from colliding uh, with uh, that is the electrons. Uh, that is the electron. But now, in that case, the term, the, the marking point there is actually to reduce the kinetic energy of the electron. You must mention the kinetic energy in that case. It is evacuated in order to prevent the collision between the air particles and the electrons. And remember when they collide, this one will actually reduce, uh, that is the kinetic energy of the electrons. And at that point, the acceleration will actually reduce. So the electron will not actually reach to the screen. So you must mention that. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I think yeah. that, that point uh, is actually well understood. So we move on to some other parts. That is the application of I uh, know that is before I move that is to the application. What are some of the properties of uh, the cathode ray? <clears throat> what are the properties of cathode rays? They travel in a straight line. Number and one, they travel in a straight line. And what proves that that is the cathode ray travels in a straight line? Yes. They form a, a shadow with uh, that is a Maltese cone. That is on the screen. 
Then the other one. The other one. Carry a negative charge. They carry a negative charge. What proves that they carry a negative charge? Mm. They are deflected uh, by an electric. They are actually deflected towards the positive by an electric field. Yes. Then, uh, what is the other uh, yes, property? Yes. Cause fluorescence or grew in some substances. That is the cause fluorescence because in that case, cathode rays possesses kinetic energy and when they heat, uh, that is the metal target, or, or that is, in that case, the kinetic energy is actually converted uh, to both heat and light. In that point, when we have that is such materials, such as uh, phosphor or sulfide, they glow at that point. Then the other one, what is the other property? That is, they produce what? A trace. That is when it strike. That is a metal uh, target. And I think you'll actually learn about that is the X-ray. Uh, and uh, so on. So we move on. That is the uses of CRO. And <clears throat> one of the use of CRO is that that is is actually used as a voltmeter. And at that at this point, we actually see uh, that the CRO uh, is more advantageous uh, as compared that is the voltmeter because of some uh, that is for some reasons. And as a voltmeter, it is preferred to ordinary voltmeter because number one, it does not take any current which may lead to interference of the circuit. Uh, uh, to which it is actually connected. I, uh, I think this one's actually that is uh, self uh, uh, self explanatory, and uh, it can actually measure both AC and DC voltages, and it responds instantaneously. Unlike ordinary voltmeter, whose pointer swing about at uh, the correct reading due to that is the inertia. So you can see in that case, if you CRO, you want to measure that is the voltage. Just the specific voltage you start to pima una pima too directly. Not unlike the voltmeter. Sazile ume connect lazima ile pointer yende inside iruke ruke hivi swing swing. You will always kupata that is the correct uh, measurement. This one only take that is response instantaneously. Uh, and like that is the voltmeter. Uh, in that case, then it can measure large amount. Uh, a large amount of current. Uh, that is without getting damaged without actually uh, getting uh, damaged. Then it does not interfere with the circuit, uh, which disconnected or actually does not take any current. I think you have to make a Then it can measure large uh, voltages without getting damages. So in that case, this point, at this point, this point seems contradictive. So this one can measure large current. You can just say it can measure large uh, voltages, because in this case we are talking about that is the voltmeter. Uh, since we know that is a voltmeter, is normally used to measure that is uh, voltages. So in this case, it can measure large uh, voltage. So I think this one was actually that is a typing uh, problem. Then it measures both AC and DC. See that is uh, a voltmeter uh, can actually not do that. Then uh, the uses. Uh, of uh, CRO, that is the application. Uh, one of the application to me on the line here that is can actually be used as a voltmeter, in which in that case it can actually be used to measure both AC and DC, and also uh, can actually measure that is large voltages without getting damage. Then it can also be used that is to determine that is the frequency of the AC signal. This one is another that is part. It can be used that is to determine or that is to measure the frequency of the AC signal. And how do we measure the frequency of the AC signal? In that case, uh, the input signal is fed actually into the Y uh, plate and time base is actually switched on. And this is where now we have that is some numerical problem or actually that is, that is, that is some mathematical uh, problem that we need actually to solve. And uh, we see 
uh, vile mambo inaenda but now that is before to angle that is that of frequency i want us now that is how to simply uh, discuss or rather that is how we can actually calculate that is the voltmeter uh, that is the voltage and in that case the vertical displacement of the spot on the screen is me is measured and the voltage is actually determined by using that is uh, the voltage determined by actually taking that is the displacement multiplied by the sensitivity and in this case the sensitivity is simply the voltage per division this division this one division that you think that is in this case what is the voltage let's say three uh voltage per division four voltage per division now if you want now that is to get now from the mean position what is the amplitude of the displacement from the mean position let's say this one is a wave this one this one is wave one e and you may what say maybe you may go up to that point so this one is the mean position at this point then measure the what is the displacement how many boxes one two so now how can you calculate now that is the voltage we take uh, the, uh, that is the displacement how many boxes two voltage multiply by sensitivity let's say five division per uh, that is five voltage per division so it is two times three so that you get that is two uh, voltage i think we'll actually do that mathematics just right now not one of mambo uh in a layer so we have that is the sensitivity is selected So uh, this one's actually, that is, oh, that is measuring of the uh, frequency of which you angalia si. Before that, I want us to know that is discuss about that is, that is how we can actually do some, uh, that is calculations. So uh, we have that is determination of frequency of an AC signal. And we are saying that is the input signal is fed through the Y plates and the time-based switch on. Then the time-based control is adjusted to give uh, one or more complete cycles on uh, the screen. Then the periodic time T of the signal is determined. Uh, that is considering the time-based setting. Uh, and after the frequency is actually calculated, that is from the relationship between that is F is equal to that is one over T. That is F is equal to one over T. And let us go that is this uh, this one. Uh, we have that is one four milliseconds per division. Then you have that is twenty five hertz. How do we get this one? Indian atakasa to angalie. How do we? determine that is the frequency how do we measure or how that is determine the frequency of an ac signal using that is the cro uh let me uh display that is a question here So, are you seeing the question? No. 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 So, uh, this is the question. It's just uh, but a very simple mathematics. Yes, I will go. Why do you want to know what So I hope it's in kind of Missouri, isn't you? Yeah. So you can note down that question, then to find it. To go back boys. Yeah. You write down the question. Yes. I write down the question, then we do that question. And you explain it, Kidogo. You ni maswali raisi raisi and you ask to sumbo akili. So note down the question. This one is the waveform on the screen. So we want to determine that is the frequency of the AC signal in that case. 
We are just applying that is the concept of waves. So uh, you know the question. So uh, I think we can now do that question. You may have to combine it. You have to measure that is uh, both voltage and that is the, the, the frequency because I can see that it's not on my side. So uh, let me share screen. That is a whiteboard. <coughs> So uh, we have that is our waveform. <clears throat> Hello, boys. Are we together? Yes. 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 So given that that is the time based control was ten. Uh, millisecond per division and the y gain uh, at 20 division this one is now that is the sensitivity 20 division 20 volts per division determine the peak voltage uh, then we have that is the peak to peak voltage then uh, we have that is the frequency of the ac signal <clears throat> uh, we have that is the frequency of the ac uh, signal so now per division we have that is uh, per division Unaangalia kwanza mahali hii imetoka wave imeanzia wapi that is from the mean position mean position ni hapa hivi this one mahali penye imetoka tuko pamoja hapo vijana yes yes so unaangalia kuanzia hapo hivi so unafuata hiyo laini so unaambiwa nini find that is the peak voltage the peak voltage simply now that is tunaweza sema kitu kama that is the amplitude or that is the displacement that, that is simply that is the amplitude from this point to this point yenye utapata hapa hivi kutoka hapa mpaka hapa juu now this one is now that is the peak voltage count the number of divisions how many boxes do we have ukihesabu hapo hivi it is 1 2 3 then 3.5 kila mtu anaona hivyo no Okay, let me display. <clears throat> now from this one, <clears throat> this one is the mean position. Munaona hapa hivi at this point. Yes. Yeah. So now this one is now that is the mean position now. What is the amplitude? Amplitude is simply that is the displacement from the, the total displacement from the mean position. Then you are told what is the peak voltage. Now the peak voltage is now from this point, the mean position, uh, that is at that point up to this point. So now uh, if one division is 20 volts, how many volts do we have? It is one, two, three, then 3.5. Are we together up to that point? Yes. So uh, it is 3.5. So the peak voltage will be equal to what? 3.5 division multiplied by 20 voltage. Yes. Hello? Yes. Yes. 
so itakuwa ni 3. Point, so itakuwa that is now uh, that is 3.5 uh, 3.5 division multiplied by that is uh, voltage per division. So what is the answer? 70 voltage. Yes. Then we go to peak to peak voltage. Peak to peak voltage. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Why are we multiplying by the Y gain voltage? To get the peak yeah. voltage. Yet I'm asking yeah. why we why why are we to multiply the Y gain to get the peak voltage? Why are we multiplying by the Y gain to get the peak voltage? Yes. The reason uh, that is in this case, uh, you are given what? Unangalia chenye umepatiwa. It is Y gain at 20 volt per division. If kama ungekua umepatiwa vitu ingine, jyo ungekua labu mseme chenye utakua umepatiwa. But now that is in our case, just all now that is the symbol, just the symbol instruction. You are given what? The Y gain at 20 volt per division. So we now use this one because akuna ingine nye tumepatiwa. Because now this one is now connected where it is connected to the Y input uh, terminal. Are you together? Yeah. So in that case, we take now that is now the peak to peak voltage is what? Now the peak to peak voltage is now twice the peak voltage. So what is the answer? Hello? <clears throat> I can see my Abby, it's 140 volt. Very good. Because you're simply multiplying that is by two. That you know that the big voltage, the big mm -hmm. voltage is 70, so you multiply by two, so you obtain that 140 voltage. Then the periodic time. Now, how do we get now that is uh, the periodic time? The periodic time simply uh, consider one complete uh, oscillation. If now, in that case, the time based control was 10 milliseconds per division. This one is actually a, a graph of that is the V, again, that is T. So in that case, what is the periodic time? At this point, for, that is for one complete oscillation is actually uh, how many number of divisions? One, two, three, four. Four number of division. And one division is 10 milliseconds. So you take, 10 milliseconds multiplied by 4 so that you can obtain that is 40 milliseconds. But now, uh, according now, that is as the guidelines and laws that governs physics always give out that is your answers in SI units. So, okay. in that case, 40 multiplied by 10 is power negative 3. Very good, Wakahio. I can see Wakahio has actually obtained 25 hertz. So one over four times uh, that's one over forty times ten is power negative three, and the answer is one over zero point zero four, which is equal to twenty five hertz. So uh, then I have another last question to share. So why are we multiplying by ten power negative three? To convert it to seconds, because now the answer is in milliseconds. Are we in agreement? Yes. Then I have that is another. Let, let us do that. Is the last question. Then you have that is another. The other lesson. Uh, so the last question is this one. Let's do 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 this one. So uh, we have this other question.
the figure below shows a trip on the screen of an AC signal connected uh, to the Y plates of CRO with time base, uh, that is the time base on. Given that the time control is five milliseconds per division, the Y gain is at 100 volts per division. Determine the frequency of the AC signal and the peak voltage of the input signal. Uh huh. Tufanya ya kwanza. Tutafute kwanza. Uh, that is the, the frequency. How do you get the frequency? Somebody can just explain. Um, we get the periodic time, which will be um, four times uh -huh. four times two. Yes, twenty. So you get what? Twenty milliseconds. Very good. Twenty milliseconds. Uh -huh. Then. Um. Then convert the milliseconds to seconds. Mm -hmm. Which is zero point zero two. Mm -hmm. Then that is equal to one over t. So you say one over zero. Ah, uh, very good, Chelimo. So that one is very nice. So you just now that is for one complete oscillation. How many division? This one is a complete oscillation. So we have that is four division one, two, three, four. Four multiplied by five milliseconds. So that you can obtain that is 20 milliseconds. Convert 20 milliseconds to second. Multiply by 10 raised per negative three or three divided by 1000. So in that case, from the relationship between frequency and periodic time. F is equal to one over T. So one divided by the answer obtained, and in that case, you're going to obtain that is your answer. Then determine the peak voltage of the input signal. What is the amplitude? How many divisions do we have? One, two, three. So three multiplied by 100 volts. So in that case, you're going to obtain that is 100 voltage. Two boys. Yes. Then yes, the good. peak to peak voltage, yes. the peak to peak voltage, you multiply by two. Two kwa pamoja Yes. Sir. I hope you are in Yes. So the so peak to peak voltage. You multiply by peak two. voltage. Very good. So you multiply by two and so on. So the only thing that we'll actually uh, we are remaining with is the TV. Uh, we are going to discuss about that is the television tube next time when we meet. But go and. Uh, repeat, uh, or rather, go and reread again. Pitia, uh, Ili Weza Kuelewa Zaidi, then do some more uh, calculation. Then Pitia some Maswali, how questions are actually tested when it comes that it's got the race, oscilloscope, and so on. So, up to that point, uh, I'll leave it at that point and just wish you that is, uh, a Merry Christmas and that is the Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. What about the next one? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. You are supposed to share the notes. Thank you. Thank you. Relax. I'll share. I'll share the notes. Sama sama. Thank you, sir. Okay.